Hey everybody, it's me, Ace Ligon. It's springtime, which means that I finally get to wear my vest again. Seriously, I love wearing this thing. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and take a selfie. You will not receive a selfie! Ah, holy shit! Okay, but yeah, I'm uh, back with part two of my top ten Daniel vs. Villains list. I covered ten to six last time, so let's move on to number five. Gordon Taylor. So yeah, in case you didn't know, I have a very weird habit of incorporating the Yu-Gi-Oh card game into my blogs because I'm fucking weird like that. Gordon started out as a sort of decent duelist who was suffering from a bad luck streak. He ended up being confronted by the Jack of All and was given a card containing a fragment of the Brute's power. Not only did that special card turn his bad luck around, but it eventually granted him the ability to summon his monsters into the physical world. But as with many superpowers, this gift began to corrupt him. Gordon began to delight in the suffering of others, and when he was pulled into one of the Game Master's tournaments, he willingly goes, went along with it, driven by his newfound lust for violence. He killed nearly every enemy he came across, including fellow duelist Salo Ixtranel. Salo's death angered David Calloway, who acquired a deck of his own to challenge Gordon. Although Calloway was destined to lose and consequently die, he averted his tragic fate and managed to defeat Gordon, killing him in the process. Naturally, though, that wasn't the end. Jack not only saw fit to revive Gordon, but brought him to Ralia, where he was empowered by the great old one Cthulhu, becoming a star spawn. Blessed with great knowledge and even greater strength, Gordon set out to assemble a group of followers to help him accomplish his enigmatic goals. He clashed yet again with Calloway, who was able to kill him a second time. Despite his absence, Gordon's lackeys continue to follow the instructions he left behind to them. There was also a clone of Gordon created from his memories, but he was never quite as evil as the real thing. So, yeah, um, card game. I guess. Uh, number four. William Timerus, a.k.a. The Game Master. The Game Master has existed since the days of ancient Egypt, where he was a member of a thieves' clan led by Abdallah. After becoming a servant of the Wooden Girl, he sought to gain more power from the various spheres. After learning a great deal of magic from the blind man's books, he betrayed his old master, becoming his own entity. Abdallan gave him command of the thieves' clan, which he made into his own personal servants, the cards, and he proceeded to claim his own domain, which came to be called the board. As millennia passed, the game master continued to grow in power, rivaling the fears themselves. He even created the great game, which the fears take part in, using humans as their chess pieces. He began bringing humans to his domain to fight each other for his amusement. He also developed affections for the vision, the fear of destiny. However, she never returned his feelings. When she fell in love with a mere mortal, he grew outraged and killed her. He also attempted to kill her lover and their children, but that man fought back. He gained the power of mana and dubbed himself the Ace of Chaos and began fighting against the Game Master. The Game Master fought against the Ace of Chaos for several centuries while having his servants hunt down any of their descendants they could find. He was eventually successful in capturing and imprisoning the Ace of Chaos. The Game Master has always been one of the most powerful beings of the Danielverse and was hated by all of the protagonists. On December 11th of 2012, he enacted a plan to destroy the planet Earth, killing all of humanity and the fears while retreating to the safety of his own domain. His plan was stopped by Benjamin Malkator, a distant descendant of the Vision and the Ace of Chaos, who gave his life to restrain the explosion and save his friends. Isaac Ozalia then used his reality-warping powers to destroy the Game Master. Despite this, some of his power still lingers in the world, and there are those who would seek to wield it or even bring him back. So yeah, that's number four for you. Next up is number... Why am I even saying this? You guys can count. Number fucking three. Damien Monroe, a.k.a. The Bloody Biker. Damien was a childhood friend of Benjamin Malkator. 
However, one day Malkator was corrupted by the dying man shard Hellfire, who caused him to kill Damien's sister. Damien angrily tried to avenge her by killing Malkator, but before he could, they both had their memories erased by the blind man and were brought into the archive. The game master eventually revealed his past to him, and in an attempt to gain the power to fight Malkator again, he took part in an archive experiment. The experiment almost killed him, but due to some powers given to him by the game master, he was able to survive and come back even stronger. The Bloody Biker has continued to be a threat to several Danielverse protagonists, including Daniel, Malkator, and Calloway. He possesses the ability to control each atom of his body, as well as some metal the Archive experiment gave him control over. He uses this metal mainly to form weapons or create a bicycle which is capable of exceeding the speed of a race car. He is also extremely strong and fast and is a skilled sword fighter, especially with falchions. He eventually gained the ability to fire blasts of energy from his eyes and hands, and he is supposedly immortal. Even a bullet between the eyes and being completely atomized won't keep him down for long. He is extremely violent and obsessed with rivalry. He has been known to slaughter people and use their blood to dye his clothing red. He once chopped off a man's arm for no other reason than to inform the world of his existence. He even took control of another domain by bullying most of its inhabitants into serving him. His great power, violent nature, and unpredictable behavior have made him a da dangerous adversary to the Danielverse protagonists. So now we're up to my penultimate selection. I present to you number two. Red Daniel Hello. What, what the? Why are you here? I came here to talk about myself. No, we're not doing this. Oh, come on. I'll be your friend. I don't want to be your friend. I'll suck your dick. What? No. Ugh. No. Oh, come on. I'm bored. Just let me do this. Not happening, Red. You never let me have any fun. That's because your idea of fun is sick, twisted, and usually illegal. Well, if I can't help you with the video, then can I at least go to the mall? Last time I let you go to the mall, four people died and six teenage girls were impregnated. Yeah, that was a fun evening. But can I please do this part? Oh my god! If it will shut you up for a little while, then fine. You can do it. On one condition. Name it. P.G. 13. Alright, keep it PG. I can do that. Probably. Okay then, hello everybody, I'm Red Daniel, the number one villain of the Danielverse. Number two. What? What do you mean, number two? You're only the number two villain. That's bullshit! Why am I only number two? Because you are number two. That was the worst poop joke ever. You deserve to be thrown in jail for making that poop joke. That's how bad your poop joke was. Just get on with it. Okay, fine. I guess I'll start with my backstory. As you might be able to guess, I'm an alternate universe version of Daniel Ferris. I went to my first party at the age of 14. While I was there, I consumed some of the red cap. She took hold of me, causing me to give in to my deepest, darkest temptations. Then I met this girl, and I... Um, I, uh... Okay, Ace Legan is glaring very angrily at me, so I assume he doesn't want me getting into detail. But I did something to that girl that was very, very bad, and I got arrested for it. Then the red cap went dormant for a while, and I had to deal with my entire, entire family being ashamed of me because of what I had done. Eventually, after three years of stewing in my own guilt, the red cap returned to me. She offered me a reprieve, freedom from all the regret I had been feeling, and I accepted her offer. She consumed me, making me into a blood vessel and stripping me of all the negative emotions that always held me back. And I loved it. It was amazing, being untethered by morality and guilt. <laughs> Red, stop laughing maniacally. Ugh, fine. 
Anyway, becoming a blood vessel gave me a variety of powers. I could control my blood at will, and I was even able to produce an infinite amount so that I'd never run out. I could harden it enough to stop a blade and crystallize it to form weapons. I could heal faster, fight better. I had my masochism cranked up to such a level that my strength actually increased while I was in pain. I even learned to master the art of the drunken fist. So, I ended up serving her for several years. I was on my way to kill my universe's version of Vocalis when I was pulled into one of my universe's Game Master's tournaments. While I was there, I met this guy and we teamed up together and made it to the finals. However, I developed some attachments to this man, and when ordered to kill him in the final round, I refused. So, the Game Master, being the generous host he is, had one of his servants hold me down and force me to watch while he brutally mutilated, mutilated my friend in front of my eyes. I lost my cool and attempted to murder the fuck out of everyone there. Then a portal opened and I was pulled into the Danielverse. I decided to help out some of those people there, including my alternate self and that cute Callaway guy, while also taking the opportunity to spread my own universe's red cap into their universe and also kill most of their universe's Game Master's servants. Man, this alternate universe crap is complicated. But eventually, the pain of losing my friend got to me, and I decided to commit suicide by Daniel. So what I did was I assaulted Daniel's hot snake girlfriend, and he got really mad and stabbed a flaming sword through my chest. Okay, so is that good? It'll do. Now can you please get out of my apartment? Ooh, can I go to the movies? Do you remember what happened the last time I let you go to the movies? Hey... I did not kill that girl. There was a sticky note on her forehead saying, She broke my heart, so I broke her ribcage. Signed, R.D. Well, those could have been anyone's initials. It was written in blood. That doesn't prove anything. Your blood. Well then, someone must have stolen it. <sighs> Let's just wrap this up. So, I suppose I could do my number one villain now, but I'm very lazy and I love to leave people hanging, so you'll just have to wait till next time. Uh, stay tuned for part three, which will include a few honorable mentions, along with my number one evil villain. So, um, again, if you have anything to say about the list, leave a comment below, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.